Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good evening. It is the Earth Master here on this uh, Friday night. Yeah, Friday night. For some reason, it does not feel like Friday. Uh, April 14th, 2023. It's about 10.30 p.m. here in the state of California, where the latest earthquake is a 1.4. Into the region, uh, looks like just off the San Andreas Fault, it looks like. Uh, the latest quake on the globe. Uh, before we jump into earthquake activity, I want to cover... Uh, a little article I find rather interesting here. We've been kind of chatting a lot about the Cascadia subduction zone. And this article was put out about three days ago uh, from this website. I will include it in the description below. Uh, that way you guys can check out this link for yourself. I'm not going to read over this entire article. But it is a rather uh, interesting article about the Cascadia subduction zone and some warm liquid spewing uh, from the Oregon seafloor. Uh, they say it comes from the Cascadia Fault. Studies could uh, offer clues to uh, potential earthquake hazards. Um, there's a, a whole article on it and even a video there on YouTube. So check it out. Um, just a couple different uh, sections I want to point out here. The mega thrust area, the Cascadia, uh, they say is like an air hockey table. Uh, Solomon, one of the uh, discovery folks here. Uh, if the fluid pressure is high... It's like the air is turned on, meaning that there's less friction and the two plates can slip. If the fluid pressure is lower, the two plates will lock and that's when stress can build up. Uh, according to these folks, fluid release from the fault zone is like a, a leaking lubricant. That's bad news for earthquake hazards. Uh, less lubricant means stress can build to create a damaging earthquake. Um, and they, they go on and kind of chat a little bit about this. Um, Cascadia subduction zone uh, area and this odd bubble activity rising from the seafloor uh, around the Cascadia subduction zone. It's well worth the read, folks. Check it out. Again, this will be provided. The link will be provided in the description of this update video. For now, let's go ahead and check out uh, if we got anything new going on out here along the Cascadia. Uh, it doesn't look like it. There's one earthquake here from early this morning. It looks like uh, just after midnight. Not seeing anything popping up here across Northern California or Washington. I find that kind of strange. Um, there's all there's almost always earthquake activity taking place somewhere, but for some reason it's not being reported. Let's check out the uh, tremor map here along the Cascadia. And uh, yep, no surprise, 545 epicenters of tremor. Again, within our zone, we've been watching this area, oh, for about five, six days now. The tremor's been fairly consistent. Notice the rise here. Uh, this should peak out in a couple days and then drop back down. Uh, looks like the intervals here have uh, been st staying pretty consistent um, over the past couple years. But prior to that, we were looking at intervals, uh, regular uptick and in tremor intervals uh, every, oh, I don't know, every... 14 months or so maybe less or maybe more than that uh, it's only been recently here in the past couple years that we've noticed an enhanced uh period of you know kind of like a shortness of the intervals between major tremor activity again this is not volcanic activity this is not harmonic tremor this is tremor in re in um, in relation to the two plates here um, creating a little slow slip event, a vibrational frequency, if you will. Uh, and this is basically the Juan de Fuca plate here offshore. Um, as a whole, technically there's three separate plates here, but you know, we try not to cover that too much. But you got the Explorer plate, the Juan de Fuca plate, and the Gorda plate down here, all kind of being shoved here to the east underneath the North American plate called the Cascadia subduction zone. And um, that uh, the trimmer creates these uh, frequencies, these low vibrational frequencies here. They're not like a jolt of earthquake, a sudden release of pressure, but more so of just a shoving down of the plate in slow terms. Of course, that does add further strain up here along the Cascadia. Throw in everything else out here that's uh, been kind of odd with the Cascadia subduction zone, including those um, the warm fluid. Uh, and, and it makes a, you know, a little scary scenario, you know, just kind of wondering here how close we are to the next Cascadia earthquake. We just don't know exactly, but there, you know, there could be telltale signs. That's why there's all these studies out here. 
for one, the trimmer uh, observing it, you know, the uh, oceanic floor, the GPS movements out here. And, um, you know, we may not be able to predict when this one will hit. But next time, um, you know, after the big one, we'll have hopefully the enough information to go back and research and maybe see, well, this happened prior to it, or we had uh, a couple years of extreme tremor before it happened. So, you know, research here along the Cascadia definitely um, seems like it's been heightened recently. So we'll just keep keep our uh keep our guards up and the best thing to do is be prepared out there along the cascadia anywhere out here um let's see what else we got here for uh, california area not a whole lot um there's some very small microquake activity across the state but overall things are relatively minimal at best across the western portion of the country this is a 2.5 map and above goodness <laughs> doesn't show a lot we got that one earthquake here south of the border 3.5 fairly recent earth well that was this morning i take that back uh, it looks like about eight o'clock in the morning for that 3.5 uh, also a earthquake here in new mexico earlier this morning as well all right let's see yellowstone national park doesn't look like too much activity kicking up here but you know what let's double check it see what's going on out here doesn't look like a whole lot of movement. There is the seven pointer that kicked off there on the in the uh, Java Trench early this morning, making uh, quite the signature across the majority of the seismograph stations. That's not magma movement. That is not um, you know activity rumbling underneath Yellowstone. This is a distant, large, deep earthquake that struck in the Java Trench, and most seismograph stations around the world will pick up, pick up. Uh, that type of data uh, on those large earthquakes. Uh, let's see what else we got. Not a whole lot throughout the country here, folks. Fairly uh, quiet. A little bit of movement across the Middle America Trench, of course, as noted. On the Earthquake 3D globe here, getting a, a pretty large cluster of fours out here all over the Middle America Trench south into the uh, South America region, just off the coast of Colombia, where we had an earthquake here uh, fairly recent. 4.5, 40 kilometers deep, so... This area definitely showing and pointing signs towards something bigger uh, potentially happening out here with this type of setup. It's been doing that for, well, I'd say a couple days now, so we'll keep a close eye on that region. Uh, the Puerto Rico area, a few earthquakes in the last hour or so. Uh, nothing major, just our typical swarm out here on the southwestern edge of Puerto Rico. Uh, further south into the South America area, looks like mostly twos and some threes. Uh, New Zealand area not showing too much activity here across the uh, area today. Most of our movement uh, has been dealing with this deep, large earthquake here, 7.0, into the area of the Java Sea, Java Trench. This is occurring way down here. Uh, it's way off of the plate boundary, but it's well below this land here, uh, almost 600 kilometers deep. <clears throat> That's pretty deep, folks. Uh, and it looks as though we're starting to see a little bit of westward migration here. Uh, and I still think we need to watch the upstream areas for some potential larger movement. Deeper activity does trigger quite a bit of stress upstream. So keep an eye on that. Uh, this 4.4 uh, coming into the northern Sumatra, India, uh, Indonesia area uh, within the last hour. Uh, aside from that, a little bit of activity across the Japan region. And... Um, let me check the GeoNet servers just real quick. It doesn't look like there's too much activity. I'm going to check out the drums and then I can uh, decide from there on, on what to do. As far as what to cover, it doesn't really look like too much activity out here. Um, yesterday, it looks like, or late last night, early this morning, a little bit of activity uh, near the Birch Farm region, that seismograph station here, North Island, New Zealand. But for the most part, things look uh, well looks fairly calm uh let's see solomon islands and new guinea area uh most of this activity definitely from today fours and fives back building here further west a little bit of movement across afghanistan and uh let's see little scattered activity across the uh, african continent here to the east around the rift zones 
And uh, most of the activity across the Mediterranean and into the Turkey area looks like to be a uh, fairly small microquake activity. In the two range, the Atlantic Ocean, fairly calm for now. Uh, let's see. I think that's about it here, folks. Some deep movement up into Alaska, it looks like, 2.7. And, uh, yeah. Well, we got a 4. Point, is that a recent earthquake? 4.2 back building here. Vanuatu region. No sense starting to hop, skip, and jump back here towards the Fiji area. That's still showing quite a bit of pressure and momentum here across this area. And, um, you know, the general plate movement here, the stress and the um, GPS coordinates here tend to point towards this area. Of course, the Java Trench down here getting crunched by uh, a couple different setups of large plates and subduction zones. So, uh, definitely watch this whole area. It's showing quite a bit of uptick here uh, recently. All right, uh, I'm just going to make this a, somewhat of a quick, short update. Uh, let's check out the space weather here real quick. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and it's getting interesting here. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying looking at the space weather activity because we got quite a few sunspots that are currently facing the Earth. And uh, a couple of these look fairly dynamic in terms of producing a large uh, solar flare. I think this regional sunspot up here poses about the most... Uh, potential uh, but generally speaking here uh, a lot of these are capable of producing some flaring uh, this one here is departing the earth faith a earth facing side goodness it's been a long day i was out here for four hours uh, mowing my back field got a couple acres out here and i just kind of let it grow throughout the winter time but now i'm kind of kind of reaping what i what i sow there uh, and i am just sunburnt and i am tired i'm ready for bed so it's been a long uh, beneficial day though. I enjoy weed eating and uh, the lawn lawn mowering event. All right, uh, let's see. Let me see what we got here. Yeah, so 3282, a whole train of sunspots here stretching around the southeastern limb. So we're going to have to watch that. Right now, 99% chance for a C flare, 45 for an M flare, X flare at 5% chance, and a elevated proton event there at about 5% chance due to. Well, for one, quite a bit of solar uh, sunspots currently facing the Earth, and they all look fairly energetic with the SFI approaching 171. That's the solar flux index. Uh, getting up there a little bit. Uh, looks like we do have a little bit of flaring kicking off currently from that mentioned sunspot. The one I think is uh, just very capable of producing a, uh, somewhat of a larger solar flare. That's going to be 3282 up here. The most recent imagery does show it uh, looking still fairly unstable with quite a few different magnetic structures in that uh, in that field. Uh, they have 3280 as a beta gamma class. That's going to be this sunspot over here. And uh, it's been kind of growing uh, off and on, but it's um, definitely going to be shifting off here towards the southwestern edge of the sun in the coming days. But uh, either way, just Keep an eye on this, see how it plays out. Getting fairly active once again on the sun. All right, folks, uh, again, check out that article. It's worth the read. And, um, you know, quite a few viewers here on this channel live along the uh, Pacific Coast, Washington, Oregon, uh, Northern California area. And it's definitely worth reading. Definitely good to be prepared. And, um, you know, it's always, uh, always beneficial to have a earthquake plan in place no matter where you live actually out here the earth is a very active planet and uh no doubt i'm sure there's fault systems out here that we may not even know about I'm, i can't see how every single fault has been discovered uh so you know with that being said earthquakes can pretty much happen anywhere uh, around this beautiful planet that we live on all right folks take care i'm out of here have a good one